Hello and welcome to part 4 of the Meshuga discography series. Uh, I thought today we'd have a look at Chaosphere from 1998. Now just before I, I really crack into this and get the ball rolling, I will say I do have mixed feelings about this album. I feel that there are some very strong songs amid some slightly weaker songs on this album, which sometimes makes it a little bit hard to come to an overall conclusion to, unfortunately. But at the end of the day it is up to the individual to decide and make what they will of this album but I just thought I'd throw that out there before I get into this. But having said that, this album is a very, very good example of the rhythmic and technical nature of Meshuggah's music. It um, shows like a very obvious progression from Destroy, Erase, and Prove, and sort of shows where they would start to go in like the early 2000s with Nothing, for example. Now, one of the common misconceptions with um, Meshuggah's music is the use of polyrhythms or very technical and very sort of atypical um, time signatures, for example. And that's not always the case. I mean, I guess you could look at it that way, but one way of looking at it, which makes it seem a bit more digestible, I suppose, is I may have gone into some detail about this on one of my um, previous reviews, but say you take a um, group of four bars or eight bars or even 16 bars, for example, and the way that it sort of works is when that whole kind of um, cycle of bars comes to a close and repeats again, the whole pattern of the guitars like comes full circle. And that's sometimes a good way to look at how their riffs work. And this album is a very, very good example of that, with songs such as New Millennium, Cyanide Christ, which is one of the strongest, most powerful songs on this album, and also Corridor of Chameleons, the song that comes after this. And uh, one thing that I thought was quite crazy was... Um, when I first like, picked this album up, or got this album, or listened to some of the songs of it, some guy told me that um, the very first riff in New Millennium Cyanide Christ was in 2316, which seemed a little bit mad. I mean, it could be, for all I know, but I think a better way of kind of looking at it is sort of looking at it in bars and seeing how the cycle kind of repeats after, say, four or eight bars. I think it's eight bars on that first riff. But it's a very interesting and very kind of rewarding kind of style because it like forces you to listen to it a bit more and see what's going on. It's very, very strong and powerful on this album. And another very good point to make about this album is the atmosphere that is created. I mentioned on Catch 33 that that's one of the darkest albums that I've ever heard. This is also a very dark album, but the way in which it's done is slightly different. Um, on several songs, such as New Millennium Cyanide Christ, or on Elastic, the closing song, or Insane, uh, you get some very resonant, like kind of bending string sounds going over some of the riffs, and this gives it like, that very kind of typical eerie Mushuga vibe, and that creates a very nice dark atmosphere, and that's one of the reasons why this album is like really powerful. And another good sort of um, facet to this album, which makes it really dark, are the lyrics. I'll try and find an example for you. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, from New Millennium Cyanide Christ. A human puzzle for all to scorn. No face, no back, directionless. My scarred edition I'll display. The organic word for nothingness. My feet I crush. The flesh I cut away, so as to not produce the sound of their presence on rotten ground. Damn, that's dark! <laughs> I love Meshuggah's lyrics, and this album has a wealth of very well thought out, almost quite po poetic, but also very masochistic, as you can tell, lyrics. And that's why it's always rewarding to like, have a read of the lyrics. I don't think in that song you actually hear those um, being spoken, so it's always a good idea to have a look at the lyric book, and you'll see some very interesting kind of like concepts and nice ideas like being presented. So I'd highly recommend that. It's another very good kind of strength that this album has. Also, you can have a look at some um, the lead work on this album and have a look at the progression. On Destroyer Raisin Prove, it was quite erratic in places, but there was also more structure to the some of the solos. This um album kind of furthers that sporadic style and on the albums that kind of come after this, on Nothing and then the IEP, you can really hear how it's sort of um, coming from this album and how it's sort of like progressing on from this album. So you can see that as a really good kind of point of this album. It's sort of showing the direction they're going in. 
a couple of good songs to look at for this um, kind of sporadic style is in the first song, um, which is, oh damn, I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> Concatenation, that's the one. And New Millennium, Cyanide Christ. That's always a good song to go um, to on this album because it's probably my favorite on the album and is considered by many to be one of their strongest songs. So definitely have a listen to those to hear the really kind of off-putting, kind of offsetting, jarring and um, quite atypical solo work. That's quite an interesting like, aspect of this album too. But in terms of negatives on this album, um, I feel that the songs Neurotica and the exquisite machinery of torture don't really offer that much to this album. I feel that they don't really contribute anything towards the dark vibe that this album kind of produces, which is a bit of a shame. They do have a kind of tribal feel. There's a lot more kind of tom work going on as opposed to um, cymbals to really accentuate the beat, I suppose. But there isn't really that much there to like, produce this dark vibe in comparison to some of the other like really good songs on this album. Um, also, just I've got to say this, the end of Elastic is quite unnecessary with like, what is it, like the eight minutes of bass and reverb going on at the end, as well as all the songs being like played in like a massive clusterfuck. <laughs> I don't think it does anything for the album, and it's a little bit of a pain to listen to, I've got to be honest. And also, um, this is just like my personal taste, but I'm not a massive fan of when like songs fade out towards the end. There are a few kind of exceptions I make here and there. For example, Dances to a Discordant System, the closing song on Ob Zen. I feel that that sort of um, works, like the, the um, fade at that, on that song works, because it's a really powerful kind of riff and like really kind of um, resolving kind of sound, and it works that way. But some of the songs on this album, I think it's a majority, about half of the songs, like four or five of the songs on this album, don't really have a very decisive, very punctual end. And that's something that I like to hear in music. And that's not really... That's kind of subtracting from this album a little bit. But at the end of the day, that is personal taste again. You might like that, but I personally don't, and I think it subtracts from the quality. But um, if I had to sort of rate this, I'd probably give it a strong six to a light seven. I think it does have some very powerful songs, such as New Millennium, Cyanide Christ. I'm loving some of the work that you hear in Corridor of Chameleons, and some of the really dark passages, such as in Elastic, for example, even though the end of that song is an absolute drag. But give it a listen. Um, be patient with it. Some of it is quite hard to digest to start with, but I'm sure it will be a rewarding listen, and I hope you like it. Um, I have no idea which review I'll do next for Meshuggah, but stay tuned. I'll see you next video.